Hey friends, welcome back to Minute Rockets. I've gotten a few questions about how you deploy the parachute when you're using a motor that you built yourself since it doesn't have a delay and an ejection charge at the top. So today that's what I'm gonna show you how I do it. So first we're gonna use an electronic altimeter and this one I'm just grabbing from an old rocket that I had that was set up for dual deploy. And we're just gonna use this to deploy the parachute at Apogee, which is the highest point the rocket reaches during its flight. We deploy the parachute at Apogee because that's the slowest the rocket's gonna be traveling. So by deploying it at the highest point where the rocket's moving the slowest we minimize the chance of the parachute getting shredded or the rocket being damaged by the parachute opening too quickly and it just minimizes the chance of any damage to the rocket. This altimeter is a MissileWorks RRC2+. Plus. It has two channels so it's able to deploy two different parachutes generally one at Apogee and one closer to the ground. For what I'm showing you today, we're just gonna use one of the channels and deploy a parachute at Apogee. You could use a cheaper altimeter for this, like the Egg Timer Apogee, just has one deployment charge at Apogee and it's cheaper than this one. I have one of those that I haven't put together yet, so I'll do a video on that in the future. But for today, we're gonna use this altimeter and we're just gonna use one of the two channels which is just fine. So this piece of plastic that I'm mounting this altimeter to is a 3D printed, what we call an altimeter sled. And that's just the term for whatever you mount your altimeter to, usually with the battery and, and sometimes a switch or switches and it slides in and out of the rocket. So I'm just drilling an extra hole in this sled so I can use zip ties instead of screws. Um, if you're using screws, you would need that extra hole but I find zip ties to be perfectly adequate for what we're doing. And this sled I found on Thingiverse. So thanks to whoever built this sled and put it on Thingiverse. I'll put a link to that as well in the description. And so I'm just gonna use a couple of zip ties to connect this altimeter to the sled. And that just protects it a little bit, offers some rigidity, and also we're gonna put a nine volt battery up in that rectangular hole above the altimeter. And so this will keep the battery close to the altimeter and hold everything solidly together during the rocket flight. So again, just a couple zip ties is just fine for securing the altimeter onto the sled. So now that we have the altimeter secured to the sled, we'll start on the wiring. So I'm just using speaker wire here. It's not the best, it's kind of hard to strip and the insulation is kind of rubbery, but it works fine. You always want to use stranded wire for this and this is stranded wire, so that's good. You don't want to use solid wire because it can crack. That's pretty much a rule of thumb for any aerospace application is you always use stranded wire. So we're going to start by cutting off a length of wire and we're going to cut it pretty long and you'll see why here in just a minute as we get into the build. But for now, we're going to cut the two conductors apart at a section in the middle of the wire closer to one end. And this is where we're gonna attach the battery. And once we have the battery attached here at this point, then for the rest of the wire, the shorter end is gonna be mounted to the altimeter and provide power to the altimeter from the battery. And the other end is gonna act as our switch. And you'll see as we get toward the end of the video how that works, how we're gonna use the other end to form our switch. You always wanna be able to turn the altimeter off and not turn it on until you're ready to launch. That way your black powder charges don't go off prematurely when the rocket isn't flying. So we're gonna cut that section in the middle and we're gonna strip the wires so that we can attach it to the battery. Now normally you would use like a battery connector here, but I didn't have one and it was the night before the launch. So I'm just gonna solder these wires directly to the battery. It's a little more work, but it's definitely an effective connection. And I had my soldering iron handy, so that's the way I decided to do it. Now there's a couple ways to solder a wire to one of these nine volt batteries. So the first way is what I'm doing here where you just put the wire down in the well and you heat everything up with a soldering iron and then you fill it up with solder. And that way works okay. It's a little trickier to hold the wire in place long enough for it to make a good connection before it comes out. You can see I had to try a couple times times to get it to stay in there but once it stays in there then it's a good secure connection. I always give the solder a few seconds to cool and then give it a good tug to make sure it's well connected. So for the second terminal on the battery I did a different strategy with the soldering that actually worked a lot better. And what I did there is first I tinned the wire that was going to go in the battery. By tinned I mean I heated up the end of the wire and melted some solder in it so it had a good coating of solder on it to begin with. And then once I had tinned the the wire, I went ahead and put a pool of solder in the terminal, just uh, putting my soldering iron down in there without the wire and just filling that terminal up with a good glob of solder in there. And then once I had done that, I heated up the blob of solder in the terminal and put the tinned wire down in it and it held right away. And that method was a lot easier, so I'd recommend that method. So you can see now we have a nice secure connection to our battery uh, with our two leads and I always give them a good tug, make sure that those aren't gonna come off. And you can see there how those soldered on leads work. And again, if you have a battery connector, you can use that, but if you don't, soldering them on always works. 
and it's just a little less convenient when you have to replace the battery but still not too bad you just desolder this battery and you can solder another battery on so now that we have our battery all soldered up and connected we're going to go ahead and mount our battery into the altimeter sled with our altimeter so just run the wire through the big hole and get the battery centered in there and again we're going to use zip ties to hold the battery in we're going to use bigger zip ties for this because that battery is pretty heavy and we want a really secure connection so just grab a couple zip ties and go around the battery and secure it in there and then we'll grab a third zip tie and go from top to bottom on the battery just to make sure that it can't slide up and down and with those three zip ties our battery is going to be quite secure in there and we're not going to have to worry about it coming out under normal flight conditions let's cut off the excess there and you have a nice secure connection for your battery see there those three zip ties are going to hold that battery in nice and tight so next we'll connect the wires from the battery to the altimeter. So we'll measure out the right amount of wire down to the altimeter and we'll cut off the excess. You want to leave it just long enough to go to the altimeter so you don't have a lot of extra wire hanging around that can get snagged and potentially pull the wires out. So once you have the right amount cut off, then you'll strip just a small amount to go into the altimeter. Again, you want to strip just enough wire off to go into the altimeter and secure the wires. If you strip off too much, then you'll have bare wire that could potentially short together. So you want to avoid that by just stripping off the amount you need and no more. And once you get the wires stripped, you can go ahead and twist the strands together of each of the wires. And that just keeps the strands in a little bundle and keeps them from fraying. And it makes it a little easier to insert the wires into the altimeter. I went ahead and tinned my wires since I had the soldering iron sitting there with the solder. And that makes it even easier to put it in the altimeter on the small terminal block there. But certainly not necessary. If you don't have a soldering iron, you can skip tinning the, the leads and it'll still hold just fine in the altimeter. Now once you have the leads twisted together, you're ready to put them in the altimeter. And I'm just going to trim a little bit of the wire off here to make sure it's not too long. And then I'm going to slide those two leads into the altimeter and tighten down the screws to mount the battery securely to the altimeter. And this is where you want to really be careful that you get the right polarity on the battery. So the altimeter has a minus and a plus, and the battery has a minus and a plus. And if you get those two swapped, that's a real good way to let the magic smoke out of the altimeter, and it won't work anymore. So make sure make sure that you check the battery and you check the altimeter and that you get the plus with the plus and the minus with the minus and that looks nice so the other end of our wire is going to become our switch like i mentioned before so what we're actually going to do is just strip off a bunch of the end of these wires and we're just going to twist those together when we're ready to fly this is called the twist and tuck method and it's really reliable and it's become my preferred method instead of using any kind of a switch you don't have to worry about switches and you don't have to worry about where to mount your switches and accessing your switches from outside the rocket all you do is you strip off a large section from the two wires and when you twist those two wires together your altimeter is going to come on and then you just take those two wires and you hang them out of one of the vent holes of your rocket. You have to have vent holes anyway, and those are just hanging out of your rocket. And then when you're ready to fly and the rocket is on the pad, then you go ahead and twist those wires together and put some tape over them so they don't short out when they go back in the rocket. And you just slide everything back in the rocket through the vent hole, and then you're ready to fly. And you don't have to worry about a switch bumping and disconnecting, and you don't have to worry about vibration or anything because you have a very secure connection there. And it's very simple and easy to do on almost any rocket. So now that we have our altimeter hooked up to our battery and we know that it powers on, we can go ahead and install one of our electronic matches. And what these are is they have two leads on one end that you'll hook to your altimeter and the other end has an electric match on it. And what that means is that whenever it receives a current, that little match is going to flare up and it's going to ignite the black powder in our rocket. And that's what's going to eject our parachute. So for this, you just want to uncover the two leads and you want to cut these off short again so we don't have any exposed wire. So cut them off just long enough so that they will go into the terminal block on the altimeter and not any longer. And then we'll slide those into the terminal block on the drogue parachute channel and tighten up those screws and we put them on the drogue channel because that's the one that comes out at apogee and like we said before that's when we want our parachute to come out and as usual give everything a good tug to make sure it's nice and tight if something's loose you want it to fall out now and not when it's in the rocket so now that our match is ready we can go ahead and get the black powder charge ready and i know for this rocket i need about a gram and a half and so these little centrifuge vials are really great for 
measuring black powder. They're graduated and they show you how much black powder you're putting in. And they hold about two grams. So to get a grab and a half, I just fill one about three quarters full. And they have four lines, so they're graduated every quarter. And so if I just fill that to the third line, then I know that I have about a gram and a half of black powder. And that's perfect for the rocket. I'll be flying this in. So now we just need to uncover the match head of our electronic match. And we will put that down into the black powder and make sure it's well seated down at the black powder. You want a good contact between the match and the black powder. That way you ensure that the black powder gets ignited when the match ignites. And once we have that match settled in, down in there nice and good, we will get some wadding and put that on top of the black powder to fill up the rest of the space. That way the black powder isn't shaking around in there and ensure it remains in good contact with the match. And for this wadding, I'm just using cellulose insulation. It's like attic insulation. Sometimes it's called dog barf by rocket people and it works really well. You can get it in huge bales at any hardware store like a lifetime supply or I usually just go up in my attic and grab a few handfuls whenever I'm getting ready for a launch. So once we have that in there good and tight then I like to grab some black electrical tape and wrap the centrifuge vial up really good with the electrical tape that way there's no chance of it popping open and spilling out inside the rocket before we're ready for it to go. And you don't have to worry about getting this too tight because that black powder when it goes it's gonna easily overcome this tape and the centrifuge vial and blow it open so wrap it nice and tight that way it's nice and secure and it doesn't hurt to go ahead and tape the wire to the centrifuge vial just to give some strain relief for that wire and make sure it's not going to pull out of there and with that we have our charge ready to go and this is ready to be put down in our rocket and eject our parachute so next i'll show you how we assemble the rocket with this altimeter so we want to make sure we don't lose our altimeter. So for this, we're going to put a loop of Kevlar through the altimeter that we can tie to our recovery harness. And that way our altimeter will be attached to our rocket and it won't fall when the rocket opens up. So what I like to do is just get a piece of Kevlar and put it through the altimeter and the big hole in the top is just fine. And just tie an overhand knot so we have a good loop and then we can use that loop to attach it to our rocket. Now I probably should have done this before I attached the electric match, but before we move the altimeter around, we want to definitely cover up one of the leads for our switch. That way the altimeter doesn't mistakenly turn on when it's not ready to be fired in the rocket. So we'll put that piece of tape on there and we'll leave that on until we're ready to turn the altimeter on at the field. So now with our altimeter all assembled and safe, we're ready to go to the rocket. So this is the rocket I'm going to be putting it in. It's a little four inch rocket that I've had for a long time. So what we're going to do is go ahead and take the nose off the rocket and we'll flip it on over so we can put the motor in first. That way the wadding or the altimeter won't fall down into the motor tube. So we want to go ahead and plug that hole with the motor now before we start on the other end. And this is a 54 millimeter rocket and I'm running a 38 millimeter research motor. So I'm going to go ahead and put in an adapter there that I got from Lock Precision and then Make sure your motor is secure down in the rocket and it's not going to fall out the back. So make sure you have a good motor retainer there. Otherwise, when your charge goes off to eject the parachute, it could eject the motor out the back instead of blowing the nose off, which would not be a good day. So now with the motor secure, we can flip the rocket back over and we'll attach our recovery gear to the rocket like we normally would. So I'm using a Kevlar harness. We use Kevlar just because it's fire retardant and it's a lot tougher than things like nylon. And so it's less likely to get burned through by the black powder. And it's also more durable and lasts longer and it's less likely to snap. And I'm not going to go through the whole method that I use for rigging my rockets in this video, but I will make a video about that in the future. So now the thing we need to do with our altimeter is go ahead and connect that to our Kevlar somewhere along the way. I'm connecting it up here near the nose cone. That way when the nose cone comes out, the altimeter just comes out with it and it hangs out there and is relatively safe there. So as long as that's connected somewhere to your Kevlar cord, then you shouldn't lose your altimeter after the rocket comes apart. Then we'll go ahead and attach our parachute here to a similar spot near the nose cone. And now finally we're ready to go ahead and start installing our altimeter. So first I'm going to put more wadding down just to protect the motor and the motor tube a little bit. Just a couple handfuls there. And then we'll stretch out our e-match cord and we'll put the e-match down on top of that wadding. And then we want to put a good amount of wadding above that. The wadding that we're putting in now is going to protect the altimeter and it's going to protect our parachute from the hot gases that will be produced when that black powder burns. So we want to make sure that we have plenty here stuff it down in there good make sure you have a good cushion there between the black powder okay and then you just drop your altimeter in there into the rocket and then you'll take the wire that is our switch and you'll want to push that out one of the vent holes on the side of your rocket the vent hole is not big enough
big enough, you can drill it out a little bit. It never hurts for them to be a little bit bigger. Depending on the wire you use, the speaker wire is pretty thick, so I did have to drill out my vent hole just a little bit so it was big enough for the wires to go out of. You may or may not need to do that. So that is about it for prepping our rocket for launch. We'll go ahead and just get all of our recovery gear in the rocket. Go ahead and get our Kevlar cord in there and our parachute and then put our nose cone on and this rocket is ready to fly. And that altimeter will eject the parachute at Apogee just like we would with a commercial motor with a delay except we're using electronics and we don't have to worry about setting a delay because the altimeter is always going to eject the parachute right at Apogee. So here we are at the launch. We've got our rocket on the pad. We're going to go ahead and remove that piece of tape that we put so that we can connect our two wires together and we're just going to twist those together and make sure we hear the altimeter start beeping. And once we're sure the altimeter is working, we'll go ahead and put some tape over those wires so we can insulate them so they don't somehow short up against the rest of the altimeter that's in the rocket. And then we'll push the wires back into the rocket and that's where they'll ride until the parachute comes out. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, I love it! It's a little white dot. There it goes. It's open. It's coming. Man, I love that takeoff. So there you have it. A successful flight and a successful recovery. And the altimeter is beeping away our altitude. Thanks for watching and you have a great day.